Okay, everyone, um, again, I want to apologize again for being absent and you guys having to do notes over a video. Uh, Obviously, this weekend I wasn't planning on getting sick, and then, you know, um, this doctor's appointment that I've had scheduled for a while for today is why I'm not here. Um, You will have all day tomorrow to clear up everything with me. This video is not going to take the whole class period. Then you'll have some time to do the review. And the homework, um, the key for the review will be up in Schoology by the time you guys are watching this video. So you do have, you will have plenty of opportunities, and we can chat tomorrow if you're feeling overwhelmed for the quiz on Friday. There's plenty, um, there's plenty we can talk about there. So um, <clears throat> today we're just doing. A, just like for everything that we've done a confidence interval for, we've done a test as well. So today we're just talking about tests for beta. So instead of like, so we're testing a claim about the slope of the regression line instead of doing a confidence interval for the slope of the regression line. So, um, so let's go ahead and get started here. The big idea here is since, um, when we're running a test, (coughs) our hypotheses need to be about beta. Okay, and so um, other than that, this is going to feel very similar to a confidence interval, other than we're going to run tests, and instead of um, our answer being an interval, it's going to be a p-value from which we make a conclusion. So, um, and again, we won't even have to use the calculators here, so it should be pretty straightforward for you guys. So, um, in in terms of what um, what will our hypotheses be, the, the slope of a regression line, um, if there's no relationship between the two variables. Well, like, let's think through, like, a this would be a zero correlation, no correlation between the variables, right? And if I think about the, the line of best fit to go through that particular graph, it might be this horizontal line, right? And noticing that the slope of that line is zero, okay? So my null hypothesis will always be beta equals zero, and then my alternative depends on um, uh, my alternative depends on whether or not I'm looking for is there a positive relationship, a negative relationship, is there a relationship? So it's either going to be beta equals zero, beta is greater than zero, beta is less than zero. It's going to be one of those. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at this first example. A college teacher randomly asked a random sample of ten of her. Um, 250 students in her stats class, how much time they spent studying for the test, and then their scores on the test. And so you can see we have the scatter plot, the residual plot, and this time we have a different kind of graph of our um, residuals. This is called a normal probability plot. And we kind of talked about these a little bit, but you'll see that we'll be, if you're given one of these, of the residuals, the way you test for normality will be a little bit different, but overall, it's um, not a big deal, okay? So do these, and then we want to answer the question, do these data provide convincing evidence that there is a relationship, okay? So I'm not trying to say, is it positive versus negative? So um, my null hypothesis will be, in fact, that beta equals equal equal to zero. My alternative in this case, since we're not worrying about whether the relationship's positive or negative, my alternative is going to be that beta is not equal to zero. All right, and so to answer that, so we have our hypotheses written, we're going to do a t-test for beta, where beta is equal to the slope of the true line relating study time and to end grade. And so after we do that, um, we have our hypotheses written here, so I'm not rewriting them over here. We check our conditions. Um, to check that linear condition, you can either talk about the linear pattern on the scatter plot or the fact that there's no pattern on the residual plot. doesn't matter to me. I'm just out of habit, say no pattern on the residual plot. Um, independent, 10 is less than um, 10% of 250. Um, In this case, I have the size of the population, right? I have these, so I reference that when I do. Right now, for the normal condition, um, 
I know we've discussed normal probability plots, but I want to talk about them a little bit more. Um, this z-score is the z-score if the graph were normal, and then this is the actual, and then these are the, the residuals themselves. <coughs> and if the residuals on, are normal, what we see is a really fine, like a sharp linear pattern here, and I can see that these points not only follow a linear pattern, they're really tight to that linear pattern. So the fact that there's a linear pattern on the residual, on the normal probability plot of the residuals, okay? And um, I want to point out that I'm for each of these, I'm not saying, oh, there's no pattern on the graph or the there's a linear pattern on the graph. I'm saying which graph and of what, okay? Um, e, so as I look at this residual plot, it does seem to be equally variant all the way through. Um, okay, so um, we're going to say there's no fanning on the residual plot. And then R, we were given that this was a random sample. And for these guys... To get your test statistic and p-value are way easier. Like, tests are actually easier than confidence intervals here because you don't have to do a single calculation. It's already done for you, okay? The only time you're gonna, ever going to be asked about one of these is you're going to get one of these tables, right? Okay, and um, remember that we're talking about slope, which is the coefficient of the study time. So we're only looking at this row. And hopefully that hopefully you guys are looking at this and saying, oh, I can get my T statistic and my P value here. I just have to decide which one. Well, everything with slope is the is the is in the study time row because the slope's the coefficient of the study time. So to get our calculations, we can get T equals four point two five and our P value is point zero zero three. And we can get that straight from the table. So you won't have to do any calculations in your calculator to do this. Okay? And once we have those to form our conclusion, we can say since 0 0.003 is less than 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we can conclude there is a linear relationship between study time and grade. So if I were you guys, I would go ahead and pause the video if you haven't already to make sure you get all this down. But the basic premise for these tests are all the same. The only difference now is to your, you have those longer conditions because it's um, a linear, because uh, it's a test for the slope, which is more complicated, hence more complicated um, uh, conditions that you have to check. And then after that, it's just a matter of um, getting your calculations from the table. If, you, if this is, say, um, your test next week, or if this is um, the AP exam and you forget how to get the pro values from the table because you've gotten so used to using your calculator, make up a p-value and get correct. You'll, you won't get any section. You won't get any credit for this section if you make up your p-value. However, if you use that p-value correctly down here, you would. So you want to make sure you're giving yourself that out. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this one. Uh, a psychologist who can counsels people who are getting divorced. So this is a couple that um, did, uh, he was working with couples who have a finite um, length of their marriage. And he's basically looking at a scatter plot of the, the, the X coordinate is how long they dated before they got married. And then the Y coordinates are the um, amount of time they were married. Okay, and um, we can see all these different graphs. So, and then um, 
What I want to do here is just to show you guys how to do this if my alternative hypothesis is is um one sided is um can we can we say that the is this evidence that there is a positive linear relationship between length of courtship and length of marriage okay and um just so that you guys can get used to doing these both one sided and two sided okay so my null hypothesis always will be beta equals zero. And if that word positive is there, my alternative hypothesis would be beta is greater than zero. And beta is going to equal the slope of the true line relating length of courtship. And length of marriage. All right, and one, so um, and once we do that, the appropriate procedure for this will be a t test for beta. We go through our conditions. Um, just because the residual plot's the one I can see, we, if we look at this, we see no pattern on this graph, which is lovely. Uh, for independence, um, we're going to assume this is a total of, um, let's count, oh, 10, 10 of the hundreds. So for independent, we're going to say 10 is less than 10% of his clients. For normal, um, in this case, again, we have that normal probability plot. So I'm going to say the NPP of the residuals shows a linear pattern. And then for the equal variances, looking at that residual again, no fanning on the residual plot. And then uh, we were given this was a random sample. All right, um, and then to do our calculations, again, we're going to the um, courtship row because that my slope is the coefficient of the courtship. We can kind of see our um, our t statistic is going to be that three point six eight. Our p value is not the point zero zero six. Um, this so when these things are done, they assume that our alternative hypothesis is beta is not equal to. So this p value is always a two sided hypothesis. All right. So if we were to look at a graph of this you would find that the combined areas here would be 0 0.006, so they would each have to be 0 0.003. So since we're looking at positive, we only care about that right-hand area. So if, um, if it is a one-sided test here, essentially what you have to do is take that p-value and cut it in half because you only care about one side of that graph. And then we make our conclusion. Since 0 0.003 is less than 0 0.05, we can, just double checking, I didn't give you an alpha there, we can reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we can conclude there is a positive relationship between length of courtship and length of marriage.
So like I said, guys, um, I really do apologize that you're basically learning all of Unit 9 from a video. Uh, I plan on giving you all the time you need from me before the test next week um, to, to clear up any of these things if you need to. I will. I promise to be back on Thursday. I will be back permanently on Thursday. There, I don't have any other anticipated absences. So um, please reach out to me if you have any questions and... I will see you tomorrow. Uh, don't forget to start working through the review and the homework that Mr. Whelan is passing out right now.